overall energy so far is the Ace of Swords. And we're starting with the Seven of Pentacles. You know what it is you need to release at this point. You know. And if you can't quite put your finger on it, the energy knows. The universe knows. The universe is literally trying to take it away from you right now. Trying to take it off your hands. Allow it to flow. Hello, everyone. Oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's real good. Welcome to Morning Coffee, guys. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. So, it is Thursday, November 4th of 2021. I hope you guys are doing well, especially given these energies. So, today is the, the day of, I guess we could say technically the actual day of the new moon. Uh, which in terms of sidereal astrology is straddling Virgo and Libra. Uh, in mainstream astrology, I believe this new moon is in uh, Scorpio. Um, and it's interesting because I am feeling a lot of the effects of Scorpionic energy. Now, I have not looked at the chart probably since Tuesday maybe even Monday. Um, that's for two reasons. One, because like I've been saying with morning coffee, you know, these daily readings, I'm focusing on the transits of the moon and I'm looking at that from uh, sidereal astrology. And in terms of that, which uh, with the system of sidereal astrology that I practice, as you guys already know, but I just feel like I need to throw it out there again. Um, I practice the form of a, a sidereal, sidereal astrology that uses the actual size of the constellations. So the constellations are technically uneven, okay? So, and Virgo is the biggest constellation in the sky as far as I've come to understand so far. And so with that said, um, the moon moved into Virgo on Monday and has been transiting through Virgo throughout the week. Uh, I believe, yes, today is the day that the moon actually enters into Libra as well. Um, and so, but the actual, the, the new moon is right on the cusp of Libra and Virgo. So because of that, I haven't really looked at the chart, number one, because I knew all week we were going to have this moon and Virgo energy. But then yesterday happened. Yesterday was Wednesday, and as you guys know, I did plan on doing happy hour yens yesterday. However, um, I got up and I started my day, and I was like, all right, what do we want to do today? Let's do this, this, and this. Excellent. But then the day progressed, and by the time, uh, by like about nine, eight or, eight or nine o'clock, I had already been up for like four hours, because I got up at four, but by eight or nine o'clock, I was like, you know what? I can't, I can't do these things today. But it was all because of the effects of the new moon. And so that's another reason as to why I have not even tried to look at the chart because I've just been working on processing the energies. So what are the energies? <sighs> the energies are of release right now. Um, I had to take the day to myself yesterday because of how much I've been releasing over the pre over the two days of Tuesday and Wednesday. It's really the, the release for me really started on one on Tuesday. Um, and I was able to surf it. I was able to navigate it. Um, I had a little bit of an out because I went down and played some volleyball with friends. So that was a good. Uh, but there was still all of this releasing energy that was happening. And for me, it manifested as um, physical pain in my root chakra, in my lower back and my root chakra and my hips. And that is not something that I'm not familiar with. I've, I, I've, I've, I've experienced that sensation many times before. And I had all these different... Uh, definitions for it. At once I was like, oh, it's just because I'm hungry because I would eat and the pain would subside or I didn't know, whatever. So I just figured like, whatever, it's not that big of a deal. But 
on Tuesday is when I really started to understand what was happening because as I was feeling that energy, there was nothing else that I was doing that was helping to relieve it other than just allowing the energy to flow out of my root chakra, down through my legs and out my feet, uh, which literally is releasing. And the other perspective that I gained on it was, um, was that, whoa, shoot. Okay, wait, we're talking about, sorry guys, I lost the train of thought. We're talking about release, um, you, allowing it to move through your root chakra and down through your feet. I completely forgot what else I was going to say about that, but it'll probably come back to me later on. Uh, so anyway, so releasing. Releasing is necessary during this time, and this is a really perfect time for it. Now, in terms of the sidereal point of view, from what I can understand about it, um, we've had a lot of Virgo energy that we've been dealing with for an extended period of time. Again, Virgo is one of the largest constellations in the sky, if not the largest, arguably, of course. Uh, and we've had the sun in Virgo for about a month and a half ish. Yeah. Uh, and then we've had Mercury and Mars in Virgo as well for an extended period of time. And as you guys know, as I've been saying, there has been a stellium there, right? Okay, great. Uh, but what I'm feeling now for this, now that the moon is moving into Libra today, the moon is going to be, I'm sorry, and the sun is going to be moving into Libra within the next few days. Um, I don't, again, I don't know exactly when, cause I haven't looked but uh, there, there, it's like there's a culmination happening. It's like everything that you've been learning, everything that you've been working on, everything that you've been studying even throughout this time period, it's all coming to a head right now. And I don't want to make any huge prof, prof, uh, 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 predictions or anything like that, but this feels like a, a big go time. Even though we're releasing, we're releasing in order to create space for what's to come over the next few months. I feel like once we get into 2022, things are really gonna start to shift for us on a personal level if they haven't already started shifting. Like if you're really paying attention, if you've really been working through this, not to, not to put anybody down, but if you've really been paying attention then over these last six to eight months I just heard, then you're, I feel like you're starting to understand how things are progressing or you're starting to be able to see where it is you're heading, what it is to be, to come. I know for me personally, I just feel, I feel it, I feel it coming. I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to define it for myself. It's, it's different for everybody, but I feel it coming. Um, and so, and that's creating a lot of tension actually, because I feel like we're kind of, we're kind of in an in-between energy right now. Uh, we're in an energy right now of, uh, still being somewhat in the past, but also looking towards the future and feeling the energies of the future coming forward. And that's what's creating a lot of tension. It's creating a lot of rawr with us because many of us just want to get there. Just want to get there. And it's going to happen in time. We have to follow through with the process, but that's creating a lot of tension for us right now. So, I mean, like it got to a point where I was even going through certain things and realizing that I have some items here uh, that I moved here with that are I've been holding on to. I've been saving because, oh, I wanted to do this with it and I wanted to do that with it and blah, 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 blah. Like case in point, an old computer that I had from back, back, way back years ago. Uh, one of the first computers that I bought for myself, which was a, a, a system that I bought so that I could start to learn to produce music and all that stuff. I still had that computer. And I brought it here with me to Puerto Rico and it was functioning when I brought it here um, but I had it left in my closet you know I either I, I wanted to do two things with it one I wanted to get all the stuff off of it and put it on a hard drive that I have because there all of my early music is on there everything that I produced everything that I released when I was producing music heavily it was all on that computer and I was like okay well at least let me get all of that data off of there so I can dismantle this this thing and take the pieces apart and salvage things like the CPU and maybe even like the, the, the memory drives and all that. But I never got around to it. 
And then so yesterday, I was in this energy of just needing to release, just get rid of anything that is not that is not focused in the current where we're moving forward towards like get it done. Okay, great. So I go into my closet, I break I break it out, I pull it out, I open it up. It was it it was a Mac. It was a like a 2011 uh, iMac, right? So and I bought it from B and H Photo and Video in New York. Oh my God, I love that store. Oh my God, I love that store. Anyway. Um, so it was, it, it came in the box that Apple, you know, puts the packages with, with. But then it was also in another box that was used to ship it from Apple or from wherever Apple had it stored to the, to the, to the location that it was sold at. Right. And I had it in all of that original packaging yesterday. I go to open it and it became very apparent to me that it had gotten waterlogged over the time that I was here and I didn't know it. I thought it was safe in that closet because it was in a closet. It was up off the floor. I thought it was safe. Granted, in hindsight, I should have known. And even my intuition was saying to me, Eric, you need to check that thing, see, make sure it's still functioning. I never did, but I thought it was safe because whatever, but I'm in a basement apartment and so water can get in anywhere. Okay. So I opened the box and termites, termite larva all over it. And I was like, oh God, this is really gross. And there was evidence within everything, like in the box, in the, in the outside box, and then in the original packaging. And like, there was water, water damage everywhere. I open it up, I pull out the, the keyboard because that model comes with a, 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 a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse and everything. I open up the keyboard, man, there are termites in the keyboard, bro. Right. So then I'm like, all right, final test, let's see. So I go and I plug it in. Let's see if it turns on. If it turns on, then maybe I can salvage something from it. Nope. <laughs> that thing is dead, 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 dead. So needless to say, I can't get anything off of there. And maybe I can. Maybe I could take it somewhere and, and, have, and pay somebody to, to try and refurbish it or try to get it running again. You guys, it's not even worth it. It's not even worth it. I understand that I've lost all of that work that I did. I mean, the music is still out and available. You know, I had it on SoundCloud and everything. I can get it somewhere or I can at least I can listen to it somewhere. But the original files, gone. Everything from that computer is gone. And I'm not really all that sad about it. I mean, sure, it's disappointing. But what was I actually going to do with it? I was literally holding on to that computer for five years doing absolutely nothing with it. So if that's not a testament to the release that we're experiencing right now, guys, I don't know what is. So with all of that said, I encourage you to do absolutely anything and everything that you need to do to facilitate this release right now. Because I promise you, and Spirit is saying this already, but I personally promise you, that whatever it is that you are in the process of releasing right now, it needs to go. It just needs to go. Okay? And, and even if you have some sort of sentimental attachment to it or just uh, a logical or attachment to it, whatever, that's just your ego. That's just the 3D mind, the materialistic part of us that is like, well, no, I can't release this. I put so much time and effort into it or I spent so much money on it, this, that, and the third. So the fuck what? Just let it go. If the universe, if God's source creator is taking it out of your life, has ruined it so that you can't even access it anymore, just let it go. Just let it go. Pause. Okay, last thing I wanna say before we move into the cards for today. Um, uh, I encourage you guys to do whatever it is you need to do to facilitate this release, like I just said. For me, yesterday, I had to stop and do nothing but allow myself to release this energy. So what I really want you guys to do, if you're, if you're really feeling this, if you're really struggling with this, what I want you to do is allow yourself to luxuriate, honey. I don't care what it is you have going on in your life. I don't care what your financial state looks like. I don't give, I don't give two fucks. Allow yourself to luxuriate, pamper yourself. Take this time for you, okay? Because this is going to set you up for success in the future. 
if you allow yourself to do it. This release needs to happen. We have got to let certain things go. Whatever is being taken from you. Yeah, all right, I'll say it that way. Whatever is being taken from, taken from you, allow it to go. Because you don't need it. It's not necessary for the process moving forward ahead, okay? Excellent, guys. Let's get into the cards here, and we'll see what messages we have for today. Here we go. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of these situations, situationships, romances, relationships, circumstances, and places in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. I'm not sure if I finished the phrase earlier, but when I was talking about the Virgo energy, this is basically a culmination of everything we've been working on. So this is that time. This is that time to really release the things that you've come to an understanding of or the universe even has deemed as obsolete for you at this time, all right? Virgo has been helping us streamline this process over this time, this Virgo energy. It's been very supportive of us. Depending, I mean, it depends on how your perspective, you know, whether you wanna see it as evil or aggressive or you wanna see it as benevolent and enlightening and uplifting. It, regardless as to how you're viewing it personally, it is in fact helping, all right? It's meant to be a part of the process. Okay, and then, and then, so then, I'm sorry, I keep, forgetting how to finish this. And then, so then with the moon, with everything moving into Libra now, it does feel very tense because now we're being pushed to find the balance here. And the balance requires release of something in order to make space, whether that be physically or energetically, for the new that's to come out of this whole process we've been moving through, okay? Five shuffles, here we go, one. Two, some of you may be looking at Libra energy and may not be so happy about it, but don't blame Libra. Don't blame Virgo either. They're just, their energies are just doing what it is that they do. This is three. But some of you are trying to strike this balance and you're looking at Libra as the enemy. Libra is not the enemy. This is four. Libra is the balance. We've been working, 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 striving, streamlining our processes, doing the healing and all that stuff. This is four. And Libra is coming in saying, okay, great. Now let's balance it out. Now let's find the equilibrium. Four. It's just part of the process, you guys. Don't shoot the messenger. This is five. Alrighty. So let's get into this. What, what, what's going on with the collective today, please, Spirit? for this new moon in Virgo Libra energy. Exactly. Beautiful. Okay. Okay, wait, where is it? Where did you go? No, no, you're not gonna hide from me. Where did you go? I saw you flip over, you silly thing. Hold on, guys. Uh, we do have quite a number of cards here. There it is, right. Oh, perfect. Okay, excellent. Three of them are fallen face up. One is face down. So there's one card as an underneath the energy type of situation. Overall energy, we have the Ten of Cups here. This is where we're striving to. This is where we're trying to get. Um, I'm definitely feeling a collective energy here in terms of uh, releasing, harmonizing, finding our happiness. Ten of Cups. This is, a, this is a heavy collective energy, even though we you really could be focusing on this reading from the perspective of your own personal environment, your own self, that's great. 
but understand that there is also a collective energy that is wrapped up in this. And so there are many, 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 damn near all of us that are going through the same thing. The focus right now for the world, for the population, is ultimate happiness and wish fulfillment and emotional contentment, emotional fulfillment for all age of Aquarius. Okay? Which means, uh, which means that, you know, Saturn is in Aquarius right now. In terms, in terms of mainstream astrology, in terms of sidereal astrology, Saturn is in uh, Capricorn. But in terms of the, the mainstream astrology thing, we are in the age of Aquarius with Saturn being in Aquarius. So that's facilitating a lot of changes for us. The way I see it from the perspective that I have with uh, sidereal astrology, Saturn is in its home sign of Capricorn. All of this is getting us to rebuild ourselves, whether you want to look at it from mainstream or you want to look at it from sidereal, both Capricorn and Aquarius are ruled by Saturn, okay? Um, so anyway, that's what this Ten of Cups is representing here. You can either take this as a micro focus, which is just yourself, or the macro focus, which is the big, the big one, okay? All of us, all right? But with that said, the three cards that you come out have come out here face up. The very first one is the Seven of Pentacles. This, to me, definitely feels like the moon moving through Virgo into Libra, this new moon energy. Um, and also, it definitely feels like the culmination of all the work that we've been doing over this Virgo, strong, heavy, heavy Virgo season energy. Okay, The Seven of Pentacles is asking you or is bringing you a moment or is representing a moment in which you stand there and you take stock of everything that you've been experiencing, all this work that you've been doing in your garden, all the weeding that you've done, all of the plants that you've identified in your garden that you've been saying to yourself, do I want to keep this or not? Well, now is the time to, to, to fix it. Now is the time to heal it. Now is the time to take that action. Now is the time to understand. I feel like, yes, now is the time to decide what you want to keep and what you want to let go of. But also now is, I feel like we have a strong understanding of what needs to go. That is not making it any easier to release. Seven of Pentacles is then followed by the Five of Swords. This, this Five of Swords ha is, is not sabotage on anyone, else, on anyone else's behalf other than your own. This Five of Swords here is representing self-sabotage. And that self-sabotage is heavily connected to what it is that you're refusing to or are having extreme trouble releasing. I don't want to, I don't want to, um, I'm not trying to offend anybody here. I'm not trying to ridicule anybody here. There is an energy of refusing to release certain things, but also there's a much stronger energy of having difficulty releasing it. But in some cases, you guys, that's right, that right there is the wisdom. I'm seeing like the Ace of Swords, the light bulb, the aha moment, the lightning strike, where it's like you're having all this trouble releasing it, but that trouble re you're having releasing it is directly connected to how toxic it is for you or how it's just not in alignment anymore. And by trying to force yourself to stay in alignment with it, you're only sabotaging yourself in the end given the understanding that you may have come to at this point as to what is worthy of be keeping and what needs to be released. After that Five of Swords, we're followed by the Nine of Cups. So some of us already feel this. I know I feel it. When I allowed myself to just let go, and like in the case of that computer that I was talking about, like I had no choice. Of course, I could try and figure out how to salvage it, but why? What purpose was it gonna serve for me? And when I allowed myself yesterday to just stop everything, stop pushing, stop trying to do, and just feel what it is I was feeling on a genuine level and allow it to be released, I am so much happier. I ended up so much happier yesterday and I'm feeling even happier today, content, just good. Nine of Cups, okay? And it's from this Nine of Cups place that ultimately we now can reach the 10. And what it feels like here is we can reach the 10 because we've taken the time, Four of Swords, 
to transform out of anything that stood in our way. Death. Also, Page of Swords and the Hermit. And the Lovers. Okay, so this is... And the Four of Pentacles, you guys. This is definite. To the Queen of Swords. Wow. To the Chariot. To the Three of Wands. Okay, so this is definitely an energy of Page of Swords, the Hermit, realizing or recognizing what it is that you need and what it is that you don't. Who it is that you are and who it is that you are not. Who it is that you are now versus who you were in the past. And from this place, you get to make a decision. The lovers. That is, represents your highest good or that is for your highest good. You get to make a decision as to what it is you want to release. Four of Pentacles, Queen of Swords. And everything that you release at this time that you willingly allow to just flow out of your life puts you into greater alignment in order for you to drive forward on a soul level, to drive forward towards where it is we really want to go here. And that's the Ten of Cups. Okay? Three of Wands, future focus, momentum, preparing for your ships to come in. In order to prepare for your ships to come in with the stock that they're bringing, you got you got a clear space in your stock room, right? In your in your um in your storage. Three of Wands to the King of Wands, feeling confident to move forward here. I promise you guys, I promise you, allow yourself to get through this release. Do it. Whatever it is you need to do, whatever it takes, do it, okay? I mean, personally, for me, I thought I was going to be in, I, I thought I was going to disappear from the collective uh, un at least until Friday. When I was feeling, when I was Feeling through the energy yesterday, I was like, oh God, oh, this is heavy. Whoa, this is heavy. I need to step back. And I was feeling like the next three days are going to be a lot, are going to be like that. Today, Tuesday, tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday. But then I woke up this morning, having done what it is I needed to do, feeling so much better. And like, oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, cool. I can at least come to the collective and speak to them about it today and we can talk about it. But for you guys, for anyone else, maybe even for myself, I highly recommend that you take, I just heard that you take this weekend off. Whatever it is that's your normal process that does not absolutely have to be done in this moment, baby, don't force yourself to do it. Take the time that you need, luxuriate, pamper yourself, feel what it is you need to feel, allow it to release from your system. Allow it to to if you're feeling it in your root chakra, the chakra like I was, then feel that energy and connect with your root chakra and then connect your root chakra to your feet and just allow that energy to flow out of your legs through your feet chakra and down into the earth. Release it, let it go, it is not serving you anymore, okay? Last card here that's fallen face down so it's energy is underneath the surface, it is the moon. Well, would you look at that? <laughs> this is the moon. This is the new moon energy. The new moon is bringing us fresh energy, you guys. It is. It's bringing us fresh energy. So release. Give yourself the space to receive the fresh energy that's coming in. Okay? Okay. Let's get into some clarification. Yeah? Excellent. Three shuffles. One. Two. And three. I definitely, whoops, sorry. This is three. Uh, we're gonna start with the seven of pentacles. Mm-hmm. Look at this. Overall energy so far is the Ace of Swords. And we're starting with the Seven of Pentacles. You know what it is you need to release at this point. You know. And if you can't quite put your finger on it, the energy knows. The universe knows. The universe is literally trying to take it away from you right now. Trying to take it off your hands. Allow it to flow. I just got a vision of a flood 
And it's funny because yesterday I mentioned that storms were brewing and or raging. I mean, I'm, I, when I said that in the community post yesterday, it was on an emotional level. But then even in my physical environment, there were some storms off in the distance that I could hear the thunder from. They never actually quite moved right over me, but I knew they were there. I could hear them and I saw it, right? Okay. But with this vision now, I'm getting a deluge of water, like a tsunami, which creates a flood. Obviously, this is figurative in terms of the emotions that we're feeling at this time. But that flood, what will that flood do? Well, some of you are saying, well, it will ruin everything. And what else will it do? It will carry things away. Like I'm literally feeling and seeing the water come in, rushing in, taking, scooping up anything that is no, of no longer of service and just whoosh, washing it away. You probably don't even have to do anything yourself. And the other thing I'm kind of getting from the Seven of Pentacles is in terms of our garden analogy, uh, it feels like for some of us, the water, I'm sorry, the, what was once soil is now dirt. What's the difference? Soil and dirt are the same thing. No, no, they are not the same thing. Dirt is just dirt. Soil is dirt, but that is enriched with life. You know, I've been, um, I've been studying botany a little bit because I'm all inspired to grow things. I love growing things. And lately what I've been learning about is soil health and creating the proper environment for the microorganisms that are necessary for plant growth to live in the soil that you plant your seeds into. You really don't need fertilizers, you guys. You don't, especially not chemical fertilizers. We're not gonna get into that right now, but you don't need fertilizer. If you cultivate a healthy environment within your soil, meaning that you have the, all the microorganisms, the bacteria, the fungi, the, 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 ne the, the nematodes, the, the, all, the ne all the microorganisms. If you have all of that in there and they can thrive in there, <laughs> then you don't need fertilizer because the soil there, all that dirt has thousands and thousands and thousands of years of nutrients wrapped up in it. The problem is, if you don't have those microorganisms alive and thriving in your soil, then the plants don't have access to the enriched environment that they are living in because it's those microorganisms that break down the soil and allow those nutrients to become plant soluble. It's a circle of life type of thing, guys. You don't need fertilizers. All you need to do is enrich your soil. Get that micro, uh, that, that, that micro environment, that micro universe down there flowing, breaking up all of the beautiful beneficial nutrients that are already locked in the soil. And that's what I'm seeing here with the Seven of Pentacles and the Ace of Swords. Some of us are realizing that what was once soil is not soil now, it's just dirt. And this water that we're feeling here that, that's coming through, this deluge, this, this flood, whatever that's coming through, it's going to wash away almost all of that dead earth. That's okay. Allow it to go. Underneath the Ace of Swords is the Eight of Cups, to the Eight of Wands, to the Six of Wands, to the Wheel of Fortune, to Justice. I, I mean, what Spirit just said to me, how many different ways do we have to say this before they really allow us to let this go? I don't know. Before they really allow us to take this stuff away because if not, it's only hurting you. It's only bogging you down. What is swept away from you right now is clearing the path. Eight of Wands, changing the karma, changing the cycle the wheel of fortune and bringing justice and balance into your life. Here's Libra. Libra's not the enemy either, you guys. That was all just from the bottom of the deck. I do, I am curious, so I just want to pull. I want to see 
What else does spirit want to say about this seven of swords, uh, seven of pentacles energy? Excuse me, seven of pentacles. What is, what else do you want to say about this seven of pentacles energy, guys? Seven of wands. Don't go back. This is a stern warning for some people. Do not go back. Hold your boundaries. Do not release yourself back into what the past was. Stay strong, stay firm. Yes? Anything else for the Seven of Pentacles? Oh, yes, that's beautiful. And then some of you don't like this. Some of you are being blurred. Some of you are being blinded. Some of you are being burned. But it's one of the best burns you will ever get in your life. The sun. Overall energy here is the Three of Pentacles. This is absolutely you tilling your soil. I don't recommend tilling the soil anymore. Uh, nematodes or nematodes, however you want to say it, for those of you that are savvy here. Uh, nematodes are very, very, very important to the delicate balance of your soil life, yes? And for those of you that like to make compost or whatnot, do not till that. Do not mix it up if you've got the nem nematodes in there. I mean, maybe do it every once in a while. If you really have to, then you have to, but just know that the nematodes are going to scatter. They're going to be like, whoa, earthquake, get me the fuck out of here, right? So I don't necessarily recommend tilling the soil, but that was a total sidebar. <laughs> but this is the product of us working on ourselves. Three of Pentacles to the Star, to the Ace of Wands, to the King of Swords, to the Six of Cups, to the Page of Cups. I mean, to the Six of Pentacles, to the to freaking A, to the Hermit, you guys. All of this is us working on ourselves, getting inspired ace of wands getting very clear on the past king of swords six of cups and channeling a new one a new reality that is way more reciprocal and way more in alignment the hermit to the nine of pentacles to who you are releasing yourself from the toxic codependent uh situations or circumstances for greater self-worth on behalf of yourself on behalf of what it is you actually bring to the table and all that good stuff your self-worth self-respect, and that's moving you forward. Three of Wands. Okay. Last thing that I really want to clarify here, it's very important to clarify, would be the Five of Swords. So what's the Five of Swords for the Collective here, please, Spirit? What's the Five of Swords for the Collective? Yes, this is absolutely denial. This is absolutely denial for some of us. And that denial, that denial is literally sabotaging you, is literally holding you back. We're going to stop there. Over, damn, guys, damn, overall energy, clarifying the five of swords, we have the eight of cups again. And then three cards have come out, two have fallen face down, so those are energies underneath the surface. But what is on the surface is denial, two of swords. I told you, some, for some of us here, this five of swords energy is denial, refusal, absolute refusal to let certain things go because for some of you it doesn't make logical sense i understand that but your logical sense is killing you here your logical sense is actually to your detriment at this time because this has done this this does not and will not make logical sense right now in hindsight later on down the road sure we may really be able to understand it but right now this doesn't make a lick of sense, does it? It's okay. It doesn't need to. At least just not right now. Focus on what it is you need to let go of. Damn. Eight of Cups, right back to the Ace of Swords. Focus on what it is you really just need to be letting go of. And you probably don't even have to do all that much. Just follow the flow. Where is this flood taking you? Where is this stream? Where is this momentum taking you? Just let it go. And many of you already know, you already know what it is you need to be letting go of, what it is you need to be allowing to be released from your life, but you're refusing. And that is only sabotaging you even more. Okay, two more cards here that have fallen face down. Yep, that's right. That's right, you guys, underneath the surface. You got the Six of Wands in reverse with judgment upright. Okay, I'm just gonna say it. 
for some of us here, whatever it is we're needing to release was an absolute failure. To a certain extent. I don't want to look at it as a failure. Your ego is looking at it as a failure. And that is part of the reason why you are refusing to let it go. Nope, I'm going to make this work. Nope, nope, nope. You're not going to take this away from me. I am going to make this work. Sabotage. But it's not all that. It's not all doom and gloom. Because you still have judgment here. It's time to let this go. And for many of us, the Six of Wands in reverse just feel it really is not necessarily that something was a failure. If that resonates for you, then that resonates. But take it with a grain of salt if it does resonate for you. Because failure is not really failure. It's really just a learning experience. Okay, great. But for some of us, this Six of Wands in reverse is an extreme version of keeping up appearance. Saying, no, this is fine. Literally, like that meme of the dog sitting in the, at the kitchen table while, it's whole, while the whole house is on fire. Saying, this is fine. You've got a dumpster fire raging right outside your apartment or right outside your house. That is, you got to do something about that, right? It's time to let this go. Let's move forward. Okay. Closing message here. Uh, I'm wanting to pull more tarot. And then we'll get to that. Okay. Final closing message from the tarot here. Okay, you have the star. Uh, you, we really need to hold on to our faith at this time. Because there's confusion. Seven of Cups. And egos are flaring. There are difference of opinion. This could be inner conflict with yourself. For the most part, it's inner conflict. And this is your ego coming up and saying, what about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? What if this happens? What if that happens? This has already happened. I can't believe that you just, that we're going to try this again. Blah, 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 blah. Difference of opinion. Two more cards that have fallen face down. Energies underneath the surface. There you go. Three of pentacles and the five of cups. You've been working on yourself. You've been trying, you've been doing the work. Heart healing is what I'm hearing. And so right now you just gotta get through the sorrow. Get through the morning. I'm not saying, none of us are saying that, you know, you have to release this and let it go and not feel anything about it. What? No. Allow yourself to grieve. Allow yourself to mourn. Feel what it is that you are feeling. Feel it truthfully, feel it honestly, but then allow it to move through you. Release it. Release it from your root chakra down through your feet, your, through your feet chakra and into the earth. We're not telling you that you have to be some stern, hardened, you know, unfeeling thing. You're allowed to feel what it is you're feeling. But understand that this is absolutely bringing us closer to what it is we dream of. Okay? Whatever that looks like for you. Okay. Okay. Closing oracle guidance, you guys, is coming from the secret language of light today. Five shuffles. One. Two. Three. Four, and five. All right. Closing Oracle Guidance, please, Spirit. First one is, who? first one is card number 11, Remembrance. I just heard remembering who you are before all of this shit happened. And by that we mean life. Mm -hmm. 
you can't take it with you, you guys. You can't. And it's not like you came here with it. You acquired it on the journey, and that's fine. But remember who you are. This is a moment where we are getting much deeper, much closer to the, tr to the truth of who we all really naturally are. And when you really start to remember all that, you realize, oh wait, that's right, I don't need any of this. This is not pertinent to my path or my goal. This is not, this is not necessary for me to survive. I don't need all this. Remember who you are. Remember how powerful you are. Last card. Woo! Card number 31, Divine Feminine. And you know what's so funny about that? I was thinking about that this morning. I got up, you know, it was four in the morning, whatever. I got up and was doing my thing, hanging out with the cats outside, just thinking, meditating, allowing things to come in. And I realized how strong the feminine is right now. And maybe even has been for us over the last few weeks, I want to say. Because of this energy of receptivity that we've been in, um, at which is facilitating this release so that we can be receptive to more. And that's part of what I was saying earlier about if whatever it is you need to do to get yourself through this time period right now, just do it. Luxuriate. Sit back and allow. That's, that is one of the biggest principles of feminine energy. Allowing. Receptivity. Not action. That's her counterpart in the masculine. She takes her own action by being receptive and allowing it to come to her and being that fertile, rich environment, just like the soil in the earth when it's given its proper materials and proper whatever so that it can survive. She's got everything she needs. It's all within her already. She just needs to allow it to come to her so that she can do her part. The feminine. Also, yesterday, I wanted to do a reading for the Divine Feminine over on uh, Mystic Unicorn, but I couldn't. I had to stop. <laughs> um, sidebar, I do want to do more readings for the Divine Feminine. I'm not necessarily looking at it from the point of view of the Twin Flame journey, even though that is part of the situation. However, um, I'm, very, I'm very oriented around uh, feminine energy. And most of the audience here is either women or people that resonate with the Divine Feminine. So it's not necessarily going to be in terms of the Twin Flame relationship, although obviously that's going to be a point or a part of it, but it's really more about talking about what's going on with the rise of the Divine Feminine. So head over to Mystic Unicorn for more of that. It'll come. I'm not trying to put an actual date on it. We're not going to say, oh, I'm going to do it every two weeks or every month or every week. or No, I'm just going to let it happen. Whenever the messages are ready, divine timing. Okay, so just... Keep that in mind, a little bit of a sidebar. Let's start with remembrance. Okay, here we go. You are ready to live your life from the wisdom of your heart. You may have been citing, you may have been uh, citing 1111 as a reflection of this. If not, you can expect to, receiving this, to be receiving this sign soon. You may see it on a clock a phone number, a reception, in a, or a receipt, or in a dream. With this wisdom, fresh and innovative ideas will flow into your mind as new ways to live your life. No one else has to change their ways, only you. Live from your heart, be an inspiration, and discover a new world. Some call 1111 an awakening code. You must have awoken on some level to receive it. It is a sign that you are much more than you think you are. 1111 has many different explanations because we are all asking different questions. There is no right or wrong meaning, but at the heart of 1111 is a loving, intelligent energy that will always encourage you towards your soul where you will remember the truth of you. Finally, card number 31, Divine Feminine, and I turned right to it. That's pretty awesome. Okay, here we go. Look beyond the obvious and the superficial into the heart of a matter. Peer deeper into the hidden and explore the mysterious. Remember your vast potential and the unlimited possibilities available to you. It is time to trust your intuition. I've been hearing that a lot over the last two days. Trust your intuition. 
your inner voice, and your instincts. This may also be a time for stillness, for there are unseen forces at work orchestrating the whole universe to bring intense and beautiful experiences to your life. Allow yourself for, to receive all that you want. You are the mother of all you create. Nurture yourself and all that flows within and around you. There may be an impending marriage or birth around you, either physically or symbolically. The Divine Feminine wants you to know there is always enough to go around. Abundance is everywhere. Embrace joy. All right, guys. So there you have it. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. I love you all so very much. I hope you have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee, probably tomorrow morning. Let's take it as it comes, yeah? <laughs> take care. Mwah! Bye. <laughs>